These dunes are massive. I've made it to the top. We are by Florence, Oregon. Huh. And that's a long hike up here. I couldn't get my bike all the way up here, so we're not gonna ride our bikes on the beach, but the beach looks pretty nice. So getting to the beach is the issue. Welcome to South Jetty Thousand Trails. You can see we got our rig all set up. We got Tansy's cage outside. Uh, we got the bikes out. We're gonna do a little bit of biking around. And if you look right here, we're heading up into the forest. This is Tansy's playground. So we picked out a site where she could go have fun. You love it back here, Tansy? Huh? Is this your tree? Go up. Do you like this tree? Go up. Because you can't tell me what to do, Mom. I'm a teenager. We're going to be here for three nights. And while we're here, uh, I'll do a little bit of a uh, tour of the uh, campground here. Just kind of show you what it's all about. This is a site that we stayed in um, a couple years ago with Passport America. They allowed us to stay one night on that Passport America deal that uh, goes on. And I guess that's just kind of introduce you to the park. But we had some concerns back then when we stayed and we voiced those concerns. And I'll tell you, management was just right on top of it. They jumped on there, they replied to us and said, told us what they were planning. And then they um, hoped that we would come back. So, hey, now we have this membership and we are back. So we're going to check things out, see how things have changed since we've been gone. It was a really good park. Um, there was just some things with the pool and stuff, hot tub that we didn't really like. But other than that, it's, you can tell, I mean, this is all trees all around. I mean, my neighbor, I mean, I can see my neighbor across the way, but there's someone over there, I can't see him. And if there was somebody back here, which there isn't, then I could see their trailer. But other than that, we're pretty secluded. So we're just in this little hole and it's uh, a nice little spot. So we're kind of excited about it. We're not uh, getting any solar production. We're, there's so many trees around here. In fact, one area is called Shady Lane, but I'll tell you, and it was all shaded, but I mean, there are spots of sun here, but for the most part, the whole place is just shaded. And the people that are coming in right now, they're, a lot of them are from Oregon, just over by Eugene even. They're saying there's gonna be 111 over there and it's 60 over here, so uh, maybe 65. And so everybody's flocking in here. The place is completely full. And of course, we're coming up on the holiday weekend, uh, July 4th, so, you know, that makes it all full too but we're only going to be here for three days and then we're going to head off up the coast to the next stop which i think when we're there we'll be there for the the fourth of july so but we'll find out but we're going to take care of this place first go have some fun on the bikes look around see what there is to see and uh, go from there we are on the edge of the oregon dunes national recreation area so if you remember from our last video, we are down towards Coos Bay. That was the starting of the dunes. We are now up by Florence, Oregon, just, just around the corner from this uh, park. And this is the end of the recreation area. So we're going to go ride our bikes down there, check things out, hopefully get to go ride on the beach. Uh, we'll see how that all works out. So we are on the north end of the Oregon dunes National Recreation Area and you can see that this is a pretty popular area and this little unloading zone is only about a half a mile down the road from our Thousand Trails camp place so that's one of the cool things about staying at that particular Thousand Trails. This parking lot gives them easy access to the dunes and so that's why it's so popular right here and we're not very far from the coast, the ocean anyway, the ocean's maybe a quarter mile from here. These dunes are massive. I've made it to the top. We are by Florence, Oregon. Huh. And that's a long hike up here. I couldn't get my bike all the way up here, so we're not gonna ride our bikes on the beach, but the beach looks pretty nice. So getting to the beach is the issue. But it was a really great view. The ocean looks good. 
this is low tide. Hard work. Too soft to sand. I guess that's what sand dunes is all about. So we can see Thousand Trails entrance here on the left. So here I'm at the entrance of the South Jetty Thousand Trails. Uh, you showed, I uh, showed you coming into it. Now we're going to kind of just talk about the entrance portion of this a little bit. Uh, the park has over 200 camping spots. That's not counting. That's not counting um, cabins that they also rent out. So it's a pretty good sized park. It has a lot of different amenities and so far things are looking pretty good. Right here to the right, you'll see the entrance going into the park. There's two lanes coming in. And then on the left of the shack there, looking at it ahead, is the exit. And then if we pan over here to the left, we'll also see that we have two uh, dump stations that you can drive out as you exit the park to dump. And if we look at the map here of the park, you'll notice that, it, just looking at it, I mean, it's laid out pretty nice. But over here in the top left has the legend of how the park is laid out. And some sites have, um, well, most sites have electric, electricity and water. However, it differs between whether it's 50 amp service or 30 amp service. And then also there's a few sites that have uh, sewer also. So, but not a lot of them have sewer. Most of them are just water and electric. As we come into the park, um, we usually hang to the right here. Uh, there's other places up through the left area that you can go to, but most of the, the sites themselves are down on the right side of the building here, and which is all one way. And the outgoing comes up the left side. And this building here in the center, this is the sales center. All right, we're just gonna do a little drive around right here. Um, we're coming down on the right side of that sales center. And this is the activity center. And the activity center has a place for you to go inside. You can see here that uh, they have a, a number of different activities. Bingo, things like that can be organized here. But they have a nice uh, sitting area here and free Wi-Fi. Although from what I hear, the Wi-Fi is not necessarily that fast. And back down that hallway, they do have bathrooms and showers and then you can see this really nice deck they have here and it's actually overlooking the pool area i'm just looking off of the deck here down to the pool you can see they have a kiddie pool on the far right there and then they have two small hot tubs and then they have this actual pool which is a fairly decent sized pool there's nobody in it right now because i didn't want to run into issues with uh, videotaping somebody, but it's really a busy pool and it's really nice on these hot days. So this is another view of the pool. And off here to the left, this is all brand new. They just put this in and they've paved all this. They're actually building pickleball courts here. And then, oh, and basketball courts. And then back there in the grassy area, they're actually putting a $75,000 uh, playground set in. And over there, straight ahead, is the shower setup, which has been redone since the last time we were here. It looks pretty nice. So that's the activity center. Over to the left here, they have tent camping. Uh, there is another little section up above uh, for RVs, which have the 50 amp service. And then, when you come in here, the nice thing is, is they have this section here that you can pull in and pull around and park your rig and take your toad off. And in our case, we took the toad off and then drove around the camp to figure out where we were going. Um, this is a first come um, area, so uh, park. So that means that there are no reservations. You can't hold any sites for anybody. So it's best to come in together if you want to be with somebody and then try to find some place that's open. But <clears throat> this is kind of like a little maze in here. And 
biggest thing here is to this is a, this little road here access area is paved so when we're driving around we see this paved road then we know oh that's the exit because it's uh there's a couple places where i'll have signs that say exit but for some reason at this intersection we're coming up to here it does not say that and so i've gone up above here um, straight ahead is their overflow area and uh, so if you have to you can always go to the overflow and so because of the intersection not saying exit I've gone the wrong way but we're kind of at this uh, little juncture here and if we just stay on you know if we look at the map we're just gonna stay around the outside edge which on the map is all green and green stands for 50 amp uh, 30 50, 30 amp, and 20 amp service, and it has water. So there's no sewer in any of this area. And so that's why, you know, people that want to stay here for three or four weeks, then they kind of try to get to those red areas that have everything. But uh, each site is pretty secluded, so it's kind of nice. And if you Look down here, we are headed down to our unit. So we've got a nice little secluded area and we just kind of kind of keep going around here. So so it's kind of nice. They're not right, you're not parked right on top of each other. Uh, so I have to say this is one of the uh, really nice RV park in the, in the sense that uh, you can be next to people if you want to, but you don't have to if you don't want to be. So, but it's also very shaded. So, nice that they actually have service um, utility service for plugging in because you can't really get any solar production while you're here this little stairway on the right goes up to some bathrooms for those that need to go to the bathrooms up there on the left here is the uh, dog park and so we are at the far end of the <coughs> park at this point and then now we're gonna circle around and continue back through so now we change to um, this area up in here at least on the right side i mean sorry i guess it would be the left side um, once we get past these cabins is uh, full hookups so they have sewer and everything along here and so these are usually the sites that go first And at times it gets kind of uh, congested and everything and uh, with rigs coming in and out and people trying to move around and especially when they're trying to get their rigs parked um, and they block all the roads. Very well wooded area, really uh, nice. Uh, it is foggy in the mornings. It's morning right now, I'm doing this in the morning. And uh, so it is kind of foggy. We don't have much sun right now, but usually as we've been going up the coast here, the fog burns off by around 10 or 11 o'clock. Anyway, overall, it's a, a pretty nice park and I think it's very well maintained. And I really don't have uh, any complaints about the management, uh, the manager. We talked to her for a little bit. Uh, her family used to own a RV park, so she's pretty versed in how this all works. And, uh, so she's really good at that and uh, she's been doing a really good job keeping up on all the stuff and keeping everyone happy so we haven't found anybody that is not happy here in just uh, our visits so pretty nice little setup so here we come back we're just kind of completing the big loop uh, there was little intersecting roads that kind of go back and forth to kind of cut it up a little bit uh, to the left is uh, how we get out but we are actually coming right back out to our rig. So we're gonna go ahead and pull back into our rig, into our site. Uh, Tansy's uh, out there in her catio having fun. She loves sitting out there, but she really has fun coming out into the forest back here and just, she gets a little giddy when she gets back into the forest and playing around in all those trees and everything. So she's been having a lot of fun with that. So she's gonna really hate leaving here. So hopefully the next place is something like this, but we'll see. And here are the rest of the pictures for this video.
Well, that completes this video and we have um, done the things that we kind of wanted to do here. We are at the end of the sand dunes like we explained and it looks like going forward as we move north now above Florence there's a lot of things like, I mean some of the things that we're really interested in is the tide pools and things like that. So now a lot of those things start coming to play. We have the sea lions cave and we have you know just all those fun little things along the, the main portion of the co uh, coast. And so we are going to move out today and move on. And so um, hope that uh, you found this video of uh, value. Uh, the idea is to just kind of show you the area and then hopefully you'll want to come and, and see the area. I know uh, there's a lot of things to do here that we did not do. Uh, we went to the visitor center twice here in Florence and both times it was closed. So I don't know if it's closed because of the pandemic. Uh, they, in Oregon here, they still have everything a lot of places are locked down <clears throat> and uh, masks are required everywhere so it's uh it, that's in florence here uh, it, we haven't noticed that 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 much until we got to here so uh, some of the businesses here really care and some don't and uh and so um it is what it is is my saying so anyway we are going to uh, close this video out and just want to say uh, thanks for watching and we hope to see you down the road.